يقول الحق تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين لله شهداء كونوا قوامين بال كونوا قوامين لله شهداء بالقسط ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم ألا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون This is an ayah from Surah Al-Mahdi which is called also Surah Al-Uhud Al-Mawathiq, the covenants and in this ayah Allah Azza wa Jal explains to us a universal concept that we need to be mindful about. Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu, kunu qawwameena lillah. Shuhada'a bil-qis. Allah is saying to us, be people of justice. Be objective and open-minded individuals. Not for the sake of anything, but for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنْآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُ And do not, because of feelings you have in your heart, against someone who have done injustice to you to be unjust be be justice be be open minded and this is as i said a major principle in the deen of islam when we are dealing with others around us we deal with them based on the notion that we are all human beings belong to one father ya ayyuhan nas taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidah and when we are trying to evaluate the international issues that are happening in the Muslim world and how we are as community and minorities, and by the way, as Muslims, the majority of Muslims are living as minorities in different parts of the world. There is a big percentage of Muslims living within what's so-called Muslim countries or outside Muslim countries in the West as being minorities and being a minority is a norm and this is how Islam started it started as a minority in Mecca and then it started and then after that it spread to Al Habasha Abyssinia and then to Medina as a minority and then became a problem uh, the state of Islam so when we look and evaluate things in our mind we are objective when it comes to the wrongdoing of a small group from within our community, from our, from within the, the fold of Islam. And we say that whatever happened in Europe or in Paris is not something that aligns with our teachings of the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. But yet at the same time, as we condemn this group of individuals who have done what they have done, we also condemn what is right now happening in Syria? What is right now happening in other parts of the Muslim Ummah? Justice needs to be applied to all without any discrimination. And that's why we call upon France to be more open-minded and look to the model that we have created here in Canada as a minority, as, as a multicultural, multi-faith uh, society where we see ourselves as Muslims being integrated easily into the society. So we call upon friends and say to them, though that what happened is wrong, you need to reevaluate why this has happened. And this is now in the news. This is not only my only own personal opinion. This is the opinion of so many thinkers in Europe who are saying, why are those who are born in France not with dual citizenships, are doing what they have done. Justice needs to be applied. And we're thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal and grateful to be living in a country that have welcomed us and helped us to be integrated safely and be part of this mosaic that is called Canada. Having said that, we also now, by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, first of all, and second, by the generosity of this society in which we're living in, we will be seeing a group of our own ummah, those who say la ilaha illallah muhammadun rasulullah and those who are not muslims by the way are coming from a very disturbed environment they're living in a, in a difficult environment whether it is in lebanon or in jordan or in syria itself and coming here 
to be joining us in our life. And whatever comes to my mind is similar to what Allah Azzawajal described in the Quran in Surah Al-Hashr. مَا أَفَاءَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَىٰ فَلِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ وَلِذِ الْقُرْبَىٰ وَالْيَتَامَىٰ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ كَيْ لَا يَكُونَ دُولَةً بَيْنَ الْأَغْنِيَاءِ مِنْكُمْ وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ للفقراء الذين أخرجوا من دي للفقراء المهاجرين الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا وينصرون الله ورسوله أولئك هم الصادقون والذين تبوأوا الدار والإيمان من فضلهم يحبون من هاجر إليه ولا يجدون في صدور حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة ومن يوق شح نفسه فأولئك هم المؤمنون الله أكبر الله as if the ayat speaks to us right now these are ayat revealed upon the uh, the conquering of Khaybar. When, Muslim, when Muslims were able to capture the spoils without any fight, when Allah Azzawajal threw the ru'b, the fear in the hearts of, their, of the opposite side. And then Allah illustrated that whatever has been accumulated is lillahi wa rasul to Allah and his Prophet to be distributed among those who are poor and, pa- and, and less fortunate in the society. And Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ Whatever Allah and His Prophet, whatever your Prophet have, prophet, have brought to you, take it as a legislation. وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا And whatever He forbids you from doing, be, be mindful it's forbidden. And be mindful that Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal is strong and severe in His punishment. <laughs> and then after that, the ayat goes on. لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِ To the poor, لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ to the poor immigrants who left their own towns, leaving behind their wealth and their and their and their belongings, and this is we, what we are seeing, unfortunately, nowadays. We're seeing people who are fleeing their own towns, their own homes, their own wealth. They're they're literally taking whatever their hands can carry with their children, and they're going to different parts of the world as refugees, and unfortunately. Unfortunately, despite of the, the big resources we do have in our Muslim Ummah, these refugees are not being welcomed in the appropriate way, are not being treated in a, an objective way. And we've seen it last year when the snowfall in Lebanon, and it is extremely cold, as it could be, extreme, as it could be called here in Canada. And we've seen on the screen, in, on, the, on the TV screens and in the news, how children died in the cold because they could not find a shelter to live under. They could not find a blanket to cover them. They did not have enough adequate supplies to help them survive. This is happening in front of our own eyes. We have no excuse in front of Allah Azzawajal in the hereafter. What is the Muslim Ummah doing? We're not living in isolation. We're living in a global village where everybody is seeing what, whatever happens in the East happens, is known by the West. And vice versa. And Allah Azzawajal portrays to us a beautiful image, a beautiful scene to what was the condition of those poor immigrants from Mecca who fled by their, with their own life from Mecca and came to Medina, the Medina that is that is known to us nowadays to those who have made it to Hajj and Umrah and see it as a beautiful town with, with infinite resources because of the because of the of, of the nowadays facilities but back in the time that Medina was called Yathrib was a very small village with very, very limited resources that not even enough for the inhabitants of that town. Those who embraced and Allah Azza wa called Medina as Adara wal Iman, the house. And the Iman, it is by itself as the Iman. They love those who migrated to them. وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا 
and you will not find anything in their hearts towards those who have come to them. And they would rather to give what they have, even though they are in need. Even though they were to be in poverty. And whoever protects himself from the shuh, this disease that is called shuh, that destroys our life, those are you, are the muflihun, the successful. And there is a beautiful explanation to this verse in the books of Tafasir. In the famous story we are all familiar with, when a guest came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in, in hungry, in need for something to fill his stomach. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took this man to his houses and could not find anything to prevent his hunger, to stop his hunger and to, feed his, to fill his stomach. And then came back saying to the Sahaba who would feed the guest of the guest of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then eventually the Sahabi from the Ansar said, Ana ya Rasulullah. I will do it, not knowing what does he have at home, but rather rushing to fulfill and to please the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then as he got home, he asked his wife, what food do we have? She said, nothing except what would be barely enough to feed the kids before they go to sleep. And then the story is known to us. He asked her to let the kids go to sleep and to prepare the food and, and pretend that she is fixing the lamp, the light, and then turn it off when the guest starts eating. And let the guest eat and they both did not have a bite, along with the children who have slept hungry. This is something that they did in secret. Something done in the darkness of the night. But the one who knows, the one who understands, the one who's familiar with everything that takes place in our life, the one who knows what's inside our hearts, he knew what took place in that night. And then the following day, when the Sahabi went back to the Prophet وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, gave him a glad tidings. Give him a glad tiding and what a beautiful Allah. glad tiding, subhanAllah. A glad tiding that will be mentioned in a book, Yukra ila yawm al Yuta'abbad bi talawatihi ila yawm al Their story will be reminded in a book that will be recited until the day of judgment. A book that we recite in our salawat. A book we, we come closer to Allah by its recitation. And we seek the rewards from Allah Azza wa Jal when we open it and read from it and comprehend it. What did it take from this individual, from this Sahabi? What did it take from his family to be recognized not only in their time, not only for a few years or for a decade, but until the day of judgment? How many bites did this bear that night? What did it take from this? It did not take much except a good heart. A good heart that is full of Iman. A good heart that has full trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. A good heart that believes A good heart that believes A good heart that has full trust that a day will come, they will be meeting Allah Azza wa Jal. They have strong belief that they are going to meet Allah Azza wa Jal. How many years are, going, are we going to live in this dunya? How much are we going to accumulate from this dunya and then leave it behind? How much are we going to be consuming from this dunya and then work very hard to, to let it leave our bodies because we have a problem with obesity. What is our life and how did it come like? And how can we 
to change our perceptions and our lifestyle so that we live a hayat of iman. So with it, we live uh, a life that is totally different than average, than, than, than you know, just routine, than a, a life similar to those who are living just for the sake of living and eating and entertaining. That's not how Muslim live this life of her life. We have a superior, a more worthy goal to live for in our life. This is a mazra'ah. This is the fun of the akhirah. Before the time come to us and, and we would be regretting and saying, Ya laytani qaddam fil hayat. I wish I have brought worthy to my life. We're all familiar. We're all familiar with the what is happening right now. At 25,000 will be welcome to this country by, by the end of March. <coughs> and, and we're blessed to in Ontario to be able to welcome 10,000. And I know that the 10,000 are divided into different uh, different cities and entering the world, you'll be blessed to have 50 of those families come here. In Toronto, it's going to be 2,500. In Hamilton, I think it's about 10,000. So there, there is a chance for us. There's a chance for us to be saying, Ya Rabbi, we would like to live at least with this. That, that, that we're, we're written in your book, Ya Rabbi, we would like to be inspired by those who have, who have written history. That it didn't take much, it did not take much from them. It's only a plate or half a plate or maybe two plates full of food and that was enough to feed a man to make him satisfied for the night. That was enough for them to be recognized until the day of judgment. And whoever protects himself from the shock, then these are indeed are the mabihun. Be mindful that Allah Azzawajal tests us in this life. Different verses in the Quran describes to us the reality and the nature of this life. This is not a life of Jannah. This is not our Jannah. This is not this is not where we where we could feel that it is I have done enough, I need to have a secure and a beautiful retirement in which can I enjoy the rest of my life. Illusion. This is not for you as Muslim. Your your life as Muslim is to gain as much rewards and as much blessings from Allah as possible before your throat, your ruh reaches your throat and then eventually you will be in the dunya. Uh, I think I've been giving the sign to ask you to come forward because it seems like the There is a lot that every one of us is able to do. To those brothers and sisters who will be coming from, from overseas. And, and we need to demonstrate for them that we are truly like what the Prophet said. <laughs> the example of the Muslims in their society, like the example of the body, when one part feels the illness and the pain, the rest of the parts in the body will collaborate to ease the pain and alleviate the suffering. And that's what it is. That's what's that's what Islam is all about. We're, we're about you know feeling each other and, and feeling the pain and feeling the joy of each other and being supportive for each other for the sake of Allah And be mindful. Ya sabri was salah. <coughs> Those are people going to be coming here. They're going to be landing in a, in a foreign environment. Similar to what we have had to a certain extent when we first come to Canada. But the difference may be that we are lucky or we were lucky to have someone to welcome us. And maybe prior to that, we were living uh, a, a, a decent living that we prepared ourselves both emotionally and financially, uh, maybe intellectually, to be able to come to this part of the world. It's not the same for them. They are coming with the baggage of trauma in the back of their mind. A trauma that is not going to be easily erased. PTSD, uh, to those who understand this terminology. And their need for someone not only to welcome them and to make the transition easy, but also at the same time to hold them deal with the trauma. <laughs> 
There are children who have seen their own parents laying on the ground, dead, unable to move. There are children who have seen their own, you know, friends and peers be, being killed in a, in a very traumatic way in front of their own eyes. So they, they are coming with so many, with a lot, with so many baggages in the back of their mind that we pray to Allah Azza to make it easy for them and to help us also at the same time be able to help them not forget because it's not going to be possible to forget but to be able to integrate and be able to find their way safely so that they're able to move on in their life and hopefully would be able to protect their deen and then do something to those who are left behind them. May Allah Azza wa have rahmah on Amen. us Amen. and the Muslims and guide us and guide our children. Amen. Before I conclude, in a couple of minutes, because we're supposed to finish by 1.50, though we're dealing with the trauma of those who are coming from the war zone, we're also dealing with another trauma living here. A scenario that took place last week made me cry, and I could not help it but cry literally from the heart. One sister called me last Ramadan and said to me, I want you to make a special dua for my child who ran away from home. And she is not listening to me. She is not responding. She is living in her own. And she did things that may Allah forgive her what she, for what she have done. By the grace of Allah Azza Jal, in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan, we were praying from the heart and there seemed to be one person in the crowd who was making a meme from his heart or her heart because they probably were a parent who knew what it what it means for a parent to lose a child and because of that dua because of the sincerity of the dua and supplication to Allah Azza wa Jal, and we need not to undermine the power of dua this is our tool this is our weapon this is our our connection with the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal الذي يحيي العظام وهي رميم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون This sister called me last week and she said My daughter is back at home but for a short time do you mind if she come and talk to you? I said, that's my brother. Alhamdulillah. I saw a miracle in my eyes. This sister was in need for someone to listen to her. Was in need for someone to remind her about Allah Jal, but not to represent her and to criticize her and to point the finger at her and to say what you did is wrong and should not have been done. She knew that she did something wrong, but she was looking forward to come back to Allah Jal. So <laughs> she hugged her mother and her mother hugged her and they both were crying and made their sujood to Allah in the house of Allah. That's an awful scene for me. Please be mindful about our children. Please take whatever, do whatever it takes for us to save them, to protect them, because they are eventually our asset in the dunya and the And that's why we continue to make dua to Allah. اللهم هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قوة عيني وجعلنا من المتقين. And that's why I would like you, inshallah, we'll make a dua at the end of the khutbah to make a unique dua. يا ربي اللهم إنا نذرنا لك ذرياتنا محررين فتقبلهم يا رب العالمين. إنك أنت السميع العليم. ربنا إنا نعوذ بك من الشيطان الرجيم ونعيد بك ذرياتنا وذرياتهم من الشيطان الرجيم. يا ربي تقبلهم قبول حسن يا ربي أنبتهم نباتا حسنا اللهم واجعلنا لهم كزكريا واجعلهم يضروا بنا كما ضرت مريم بزكريا يا رب العالمين The meaning of this dua يا ربي We are devoting our children for to you يا الله As امرأة إمران devoted her child to you يا رب العالمين فتقبلهم إنك أنت السميع العليم يا ربي we seek refuge by you to protect us from shaitan and to protect them and their children from shaitan يا رب العالمين يا ربي accept them by yourself, Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen, and raise them in a beautiful way, Ya Rahman Rahmeen, and help us to raise them as, as Zakariya have raised Maryam, and help them to be kind to us as Maryam was kind to kind to Zakariya. Allahumma Ameen.